Perfect. Yes, yeah, so um, what we were looking at for... Would well, you want to speak to your nose or shall I just say what I'm... Um, I don't mind, but which, which do you prefer? Well, maybe you can speak to your nose. No, well, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll work through my notes. So okay. what, what I did was, um, starting from that perspective of, yes, the UK and the US, yep. diversification is basically now a dirty word and it's considered, you know, synonymous with shareholders losing value and all the rest of it. The situation in Asia is very, very different. Um, and in a sense, in, in a lot of the Asian markets, sort of um, the idea of diversification is in the DNA and goes back a long way. So I've dug out a couple of examples to begin with. Okay, that'd be great. So um, you mentioned the, the, the chai bowls. I never yeah. know how to pronounce it. Chai bowls in Korea. Yeah. It looks fine in print, so that's okay. <laughs> so, yeah, obviously they're hugely diversified. Um, uh, names like Samsung and Hyundai are obviously very well known over here. The history of Samsung, which I've dug out here, is quite interesting because they, they start in 1938 as a trading company and they're basically diversifying right from the off. So they're picking up uh, various different companies as they go. And it's only by the late 80s that they start splitting their businesses um, in a sort of more coherent uh, way. And even after the 1997 Asian financial crisis, uh, they still had... A, a, a large selection of companies. They did get rid of Samsung Motor at that time. They did stop making aircraft at that time, okay. but they they still have uh, a huge yeah. number of uh, different companies. The, the examples I've got here, consumer electronics, construction, financial services, shipbuilding, medical services, hotels. Similarly, um, there's another smaller Korean tribal called Lotta Group. Okay. And they started out um, selling chewing gum to uh, Japanese school children just after the war. And they now have shops, cinemas, amusement parks, car rental, chemicals, etc. Wow. So, um, yeah, conglomerates are a huge part, very diversified conglomerates are a huge part of the uh, Korean market still. And as another example, just looking at Hong Kong, uh, Again, this goes back even further. This goes back to the 19th century, the great um, mm. trading houses um, of, of the British Empire. Um, names like Jardine Matheson, um, which was one of the largest of the Hongs, apparently. Okay. They were the uh, foreign trading conglomerates. So they start by trading opium, tea and cotton, and then they move on to the fairly obviously related things of insurance, shipping, railways. Um, and again, they are, they now own property, motor sales, retail, Mandarin Oriental hotels are all part of that same um, conglomerate. Another example, Hutchison One Power. I'll, I'll give you these mm. notes afterwards. Mm. I mean, Fantastic. these are fairly obvious ones. I see K Hutchison, which has grown out of Hutchison One Power. Um, Again, fairly interesting from a sort of UK investor's point of view, the fact that they own uh, Felixstowe Port, oh, right, okay. uh, as well as Mexico Port. Um, the three-brand telecom company is owned by C.K. Hutchison and also uh, Superdrug. Wow. So, well, I mean, again, yeah, very diversified. Yeah. Uh, and you can... There are other examples. There's an Indian example, Tata Group. We have Tata Motors, Tata yeah. Steel, yeah. Tata Consultancy. We do IT outsourcing. And even the Chinese, uh, my colleague was looking at um, Foston International the other day. Okay, is that the company um, she was looking at? Yeah, Foston. Okay. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's interesting. In a way, it's a bit like a sort of fund of funds set up. Right. So what they do is they just go in and they make um, significant investments in... She showed me the simplified chart, and there are about 200 different companies on it. Wow. Um, but they are, it's not like they're going in and taking over these companies, they're just buying stakes in them. So it's like they're buying a, a huge portfolio. Okay. Um, it's a bit like a, bit like a fund. Hathaway. Yeah, very similar sort of idea. So uh, the amount of um, direct interference they have with the boards, I think, is, is probably less than Berkshire Hathaway. Right. It's, it's more about uh, just just getting um, sort of investing in them. Uh, so following on from all that, so clearly diversification 
has a great history out mm. in Asia mm. uh, in these various countries. I then found stumbled across this McKinsey report, which was very interesting. It was basically saying, well, is this still going on? Are they still yeah. diversifying? And this is looking at sort of the biggest, the, the, 35, the 35 biggest conglomerates in uh, the three markets of South Korea, India, and China uh, between 2000 and 2010. Yeah. Um, obviously, that's that's the link there, so you can, okay, you yeah, can have a look you. at that Thanks. one and play around with it. But um, the interesting thing they found here was, yeah, over this course of, of 10 years, these 35 conglomerates had swallowed up another 274 businesses. Wow. So diversification is yeah. still going yeah. on. And they interestingly split them into three three sorts of takeovers. So they're, they're what they call step outs, mm -hmm. which is where they're completely diversifying. They're going into an area they never touched before. Yeah. So this is a bit like you know the famous Nokia making Wellington boots and then deciding to go into mobile phones sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a good example. Of that. And that's um, so fifty percent of these takeovers were these step outs. So sort of. A leap into the unknown, as yeah, it were, yeah. and then the the other half was sort of fifty fifty between um, integration up and down the right. the the, the uh, distribution chain. Yeah. So, for instance, uh, a motor manufacturer buying an auto parts company. Yeah. Uh, and fifty percent were um, sort of um, I think it's the phenomenon that was the mentioned in the the Trevor account about sort of. Uh, Buying things on the edge, so yeah, you're, yeah, sort of, yeah, edge you're not theory. diversing completely. But yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. So you're a, you're a car manufacturer, and then you buy um, a motorcycle manufacturer or something. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's a new business, but it's it's related. Yeah. So that's sort of twenty five percent of these things, and looking at how well each of these had done, they said mm. obviously the most risky were the step outs. Mm. Mm. You know, you only had a twenty two percent chance of success looking at this. Group okay, that they well, look at, but they say if they work, they work really, really well, which is why they keep doing them. Okay. So you've got a greater chance of failure, but if you succeed, the rewards are that much more. Okay, really so this is this is why yeah. uh, this is the completely opposite story to the diversification story. This yeah. is a belief within Asia that you can actually make more money by diversifying. And then another very interesting piece I found was from the Harvard Business Review, which is kind of saying, so why does it work in Asia and not over here? Right. And they very interestingly identify the fact it's it's the way that the conglomerates are organized in Asia. So the Western model is that you have um, a single company, but with multiple divisions. Yeah. They have what what's much more called business business groups which are much more like a, a federated structure right so effectively each of these companies remains independent they're legally independent they have their own set of shareholders mm. that they have to answer to and they have a, a greater degree of um, autonomy when it comes to their own cash flow okay okay that's good so whereas in the west you've got this multi-divisional system whereby it's quite hierarchical when you want to get something done you're having to pass requests up the chain yeah so the guys who are sitting in the pharmaceutical division they might think that this is a brilliant thing to do but by the time it gets passed up to the board at the top level yeah. where people maybe don't know so much about pharmaceuticals the impetus is getting watered down all the time so there's less risk taking and less okay. Uh, okay. gathering up of opportunities and th they point to this as being the, the, the one huge benefit that they do have uh, in Asia, um, certainly in sort of amongst Indian companies like Tata, amongst the Korean chai bowls, mm -hmm. where they're taking this this much looser approach to how you organise your companies. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you've got the you've got the strengths of being independent and knowing what you need to do in your your little niche of the world but if you have a new idea and you need expertise that's slightly outside of that mm. you've got this whole federation of businesses that you can go to to plug into that bit of expertise okay so that is why they think it, it works as a, a very strong model over right. in asia right so again that I, there's the um the web address for that yeah, that I report I, 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 I thought that was very interesting and well worth looking at yeah so that was that's great. Roughly 
what I thought. Is, are there any anything else you yeah. want to? There's some question I want um, to ask you actually. I, I, I talked to Xiaoyer about that. Um, that one too. Mm. I was wondering these um the chai balls in particular. I that sounds a strange question, but are they actually successful um, in terms of for the investors, for the people investing in them? Well, the big big problem with the chai balls is. Um, they're very much organised uh, to the benefit of the families. Yeah. So they have very, um, very strong structures around the families, and the um, links between the companies are very labyrinthine, uh, mainly to ensure that the the family has as much control as possible. Yeah. And this this is certainly an issue. That's why Korea, as a market, is always there's always a sort of um, uh, you're likely to get uh, as a, as a foreign investor, you're always at a slight disadvantage mm. because even though these are very good, strong companies, mm. they're not run entirely for the benefit of the average individual yeah. investor. So this is always a corporate governance issue. So there's always a price to be paid between the huge upside benefits of being involved in, say, a Samsung, which yeah, is a yeah. strong company doing things that selling products that people want to buy and knowing that you're probably not getting as much dividend out of them as you would be elsewhere. But this is this is something that's being addressed more and more by the Korean government. So following the um, troubles a couple of years ago when the president was impeached and there yeah. was a lot of trouble and there was talk about how close the corporates were to the political, uh, the pressure to... Um, reform all these chai bowls is much, much stronger. We also saw the incident of the head of Samsung being sent to jail for five minutes before they decided that maybe it should be a suspended sentence and maybe it should only be five years. So there's still a bit of that goes on. Yeah. But the fact that they were willing to you know, yeah, take yeah. him to court and deal with him. And slowly these companies are beginning to... Um, reform themselves so the message is getting through okay. and and you're slowly seeing dividend levels going up in korea yeah yeah so as a long-term story it's quite positive for institutional investors like us and, and you know anita skipper and, and her team they're, they're constantly putting pressure on these people to sort themselves out yeah and every month you see another story in the news so recently hyundai are talking about restructuring and simplifying their structure which is also good Partly it's to do with um, worrying about the uh, most of the, the family heads that are running these things are sort of getting to 70, 80, 90 by now. Right, right. So there's a, a degree of, so how do we get things in line for the next generation? Yeah, yeah. There's a degree of, how do we minimise our tax bill when father pops off and uh, you know, <laughs> we have to pass it down to the son? Yeah. So there's a little bit of that going on, but there's also a realisation that actually if we want to attract the sort of investment that we need to from yeah. overseas, this this has got to be sorted out. So the impetus is all, all in the right direction. It's just a matter of having a bit of patience. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this, this uh, in terms of the diversification angle, I, I don't think it makes much difference to that because they've clearly got a, a structure, this sort of... Um, independent structure for each one that works so i think they'll carry on with that sort of overall business group view mm. but more and more they will simplify it and the the owning family will have to accept that maybe they don't have quite as much control as they used to and maybe they should be paying out more in dividends mm -hmm. so it's it's a positive story from that point of view okay okay the other thing is on a similar vein i was speaking to someone yesterday from um Columbia Business School, who's saying, when you talk about diversification, the ones that succeed are the ones that actually, it might look like a completely different industry, which I think you were talking about earlier on, but they understand the basic economics of that industry, and that's how they can succeed. It's just one of these chai balls. Are they they're so diversified? Like, again, I think what they're doing is when, when they bring... So when they bring a new company in, I think they're having a good sense of retaining the expertise that's already there right uh, which is this idea of they they remain quasi independent within the larger umbrella right so you're you're not effectively saying you know we like your company mm. we're going to buy it 
yeah, you can all go now. We'll, mm-hmm. we, we know how to run mm-hmm. this. I, I don't think there's that sort of arrogance there that says, okay, we're, we're the experts on this. So um, when they move into a new sector, they buy an existing company. They don't just sort of fling resources at a completely new area. No, I, I think what they tend to do is, is I mean, that certainly this um, McKinsey report is about them buying new businesses and bringing them in. Okay. okay. So I think there, there probably is a, a certain amount of, yeah. yes, we'll grow businesses. I mean, things like um, self-driving vehicles and things like that. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. almost everybody's starting from scratch on that. Yeah. But um, yeah. I think for the, for the most part, if if they're deciding that they you know they want to go into hotels, then they, they buy up a, an existing hotel or whatever. Okay. And um, accept that, yeah. you know, people... People who are already in that business probably have some sort yeah. of expertise. Yeah, yeah, okay. And is it actually good for the economy? Because some of these companies are so big, they're actually too big to fail. Do they smother competition? It's not like Samsung's what accounts for twenty percent of the GDP of South Korea. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's a huge chunk. And I mean, if you take all the child roles, you know, about the top six or seven, you're probably talking mm. well over half of the MSCI Korean wow. index. Um. Yeah, that is a danger, and I think you you kind of see the flip side of that in the, in the whole business of uh, President Park being impeached and the fact that, you know, maybe she was too close to these people and there was money changing hands between... So there's always that worry. Um, on the other hand, I think uh, they would argue that when you look at the South Korean economy as a whole, you know, the GDP um, over the... 50-year period since these things really took off. Um, I suspect your, your average Korean would be quite grateful for the yeah, fact that they yeah. had this, this structure there and it allowed them to get to this point of development so rapidly, yeah. um, even in comparison to the, some of the other uh, Asian uh, Asian economies. Yeah, yeah. I, I suspect going forward there will be more and more pressure to say... Mm, this isn't healthy to have these guys in charge, and and these, yeah, these things will will start to crumble a bit. But um, again, they they may find it useful to just somehow maintain that very loose affiliation in some way, even if they are breaking bits off. And something like um, Hyundai. Uh, that's effectively split in two. That's effectively two channels. So you've got Hyundai Motor and then the other parts of Hyundai. So occasionally you see this, this splitting mm. off, but I suspect that's more to do with the sort of um, dynastic soap opera that's going on amongst the family. You know, maybe younger brother and older brother don't get on, so they go their yeah. separate ways and they, they just take their large chunk of the company with them or whatever. But, um, yeah, I think... I think these questions will probably be asked more and more about whether 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 these things should be broken up um, okay. to a degree. But again, because of this sort of fairly independent approach, it, it may be that breaking them up would would not be as painful as say hiving off apart a few divisions of a single company, which is what you would have the situation in the UK or the US when you, you do these things. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I guess that's that answer. But as I say, it's definitely worth having a look at those uh, those okay. two websites. I think they're quite quite useful, especially that one on the differences between East and West and why yeah. West has actually why East has actually been quite uh, successful in this way. Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. Yep. As I said, I'm not around for the next couple of weeks, but obviously Xiao Yu's there to give you the Asian angle, Will's yeah. around, okay. Brian is around. They can give you sort of the broader emerging okay. market stuff if you need anything like that. So, Fantastic. Um, well, thank you very much. Thanks for actually help. Time, help time. Um, no thank worries. Time. Enjoy your holiday. I'm, I'm probably hoping I've written it out by the time you come back. So. Jolly good. Yeah, have a look at it. Excellent. <laughs> Thanks for that. Thanks a lot. And sorry again about... Uh, oh, no, don't worry. I had it in my mind that we were three to half past three, so I was sitting...